the rebel fanfare or rebel theme, and the imperial march, are such distinct musical representations of the good guys versus the bad guys. But what if I told you there was a secret musical recipe that John Williams used to link these two themes together? This is how John Williams created balance in Star Wars. Speaking of recipes, I am an admittedly terrible cook, which means if I'm ever gonna cook at all, I need a recipe that's quick and that will build up my confidence in the kitchen, and HelloFresh is my recipe for success. From foolproof instructions to high quality proteins and veggies, HelloFresh brings out your inner chef with every tasty, easy to prepare meal. And thankfully for me specifically, HelloFresh has these quick and easy recipes on the HelloFresh menu, including fast and fresh options ready in just 15 minutes or less and boom I'm cooking but not to worry if you're a good cook in fact there are 40 recipes to choose from every week but with me being a terrible cook I'm also terrible at shopping for produce but now I can get farm to table quality with every HelloFresh box HelloFresh's seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness and travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days for fresh flavor in every box bite. HelloFresh is more convenient than grocery shopping, but did you know it's also cheaper too? I'm actually saving something like 25% because I'm not eating takeout as much. And now if you want even more savings, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50HowardHo at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That's 50HowardHo for 50% off your order. Okay, now back to the video. First, I have to start off by explaining a few things that will help you appreciate just how genius John Williams' recipe truly is. Now, I've often talked about the difference between major and minor chords. Major chords typically represent positive emotions, while minor chords typically represent negative emotions. But that's an oversimplification, a traditional way composers have used these chords but it's not set in stone, and John Williams decides to mess around with our expectations in these two themes, and he does this first by doing exactly what we expect. The Imperial March represents the bad guys, so it's composed entirely of minor chords. The Rebel theme represents the good guys, so it's composed entirely of major chords. Okay, nothing at all challenging or surprising, right? But the chords are just the background. They create a certain mood. Like if you turn the rebel fanfare into a bunch of minor chords, it starts to sound a little bit like a horror movie. Or conversely, you can make the Imperial March theme sound heroic with major chords. like what they did in the Star Wars universe in the film Solo, where we hear the Imperial March theme, but because it's being used to score Imperial propaganda, it's not heard in a minor key, but in a major key. Be a part of something. Join the Empire. Explore new worlds. Now the mood completely changes to make the Empire sound good and just. And I have a whole theory about how this works in the Star Wars universe, but I digress. So yes, the chords are important, but they are the background. But in addition to the background, there is also a musical foreground, which means a melody that sits on top of the chords. And on top of the negative sounding Imperial March is this melody. Pretty menacing, right? Well, taken out of context, this is actually the outline of a major chord. In this case, E flat major. What? In fact, it's similar to Beethoven's major key finale of the Pastoral Symphony. You might remember this music from Fantasia. It's underscoring the part where the mythical creatures are all happy after the end of a storm. So yeah, the Imperial March has the happiest type of melody you can write, and yet here it's being used in the minor key bad guy theme. 
And that would be interesting enough, but that's not all. John Williams does a parallel move with the rebel theme. Remember how that theme was all major chords? Well, this is the melody that is sitting on top of that background. We've got a minor third down, which yes, implies a minor chord, followed by a tritone leap up, which is often considered the least stable interval in melody writing. Well, the tritone tends to be very unstable. There's a tritone the most unstable interval there is. Then the melody goes down two consecutive minor thirds, making it sound not only like a minor chord, but even more negatively, like a diminished chord. So named because it's like taking a major chord and then crushing it down and diminishing it into this more dissonant sound. And now every interval between the notes is a minor third, and you can even add a minor third on top of that to create the diminished seventh chord. That diminished seventh chord. You hear it? You remember that favorite tool of suspense and despair in every romantic opera? In fact, you can imitate a suspenseful silent movie score if you just play a bunch of diminished chords back to back. But here, Williams's melody also sounds sad to me. And this passing note here almost makes the upper note sound kind of bluesy. So yes, Williams does show that a minor melody on top of a major chord structure can yield some very memorable music. But does this help tell the story? Or is it just empty window dressing? I think it's helpful for the story because these contradictions are a key way that the story works. The Imperial March is played for the bad guys, but every time we see the bad guys, they are full of military might with lots of weapons, stormtroopers, and endless ships. They are so well-funded and oppressively well-organized. So in a way, that major key melody on top signifies their military prowess and strength as they hunt for the rebels. Meanwhile, the diminished melody of the rebels is exactly that. They are always on the run, poorly funded, a ragtag group operating a makeshift base out of the side of a mountain. Their resources are literally diminished by the Empire. And so even though their heroism deserves a major chord background, the foreground is their daily reality of being under the constant threat of being wiped out. And I think this type of compositional strategy is even supported by the film's themes. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. He will bring balance. It is said that Anakin will bring balance to the Force, not that he would destroy the dark side of the Force. No, the dark side is actually an important part of the Force as long as it's in balance with the light side. It's basically a yin-yang symbol. But remember, there is a little piece of light within the dark side and a little piece of dark within the light side. Just like how Luke was able to see the good inside Darth Vader. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. And so that's kind of like what John Williams does here, putting a little bit of a minor feel in a major chord theme and putting a little bit of a major feel within a minor chord theme. Because if anyone knows the importance of creating an indelible musical language for a cinematic universe, it's John Williams. I spend more time on those little bits of musical grammar to get them just right so that they seem inevitable. If you like this video, check out my breakdown of the score for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Thanks for watching. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon, including my newest patrons, Danny HM, Beatrix Smith, and Julianne Key. Please subscribe for more musical breakdowns, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.